Hello and welcome to the 15th episode of Business Litigation TV. This is the internet's most passionate show about business litigation. And today I want to talk to you about reading. Something very simple. Everyone who is watching this has the ability to read because you're on the internet right now. And my point about reading is simple. Do it. Okay? Read the contracts. Read all the language in the deal. Read it, read it, read it, okay? It's amazing how much gets missed by not taking the time and reading it, okay? If it concerns your business, your money, your livelihood, read it. Even if it's that annoying fine print thing that pops up, the terms and conditions that pops up on the internet, read it, okay? Anything that has to do with your business, your money needs to be read. This sounds simple, and yet it's messed up many, many times. For example, I'll give you two. The first example is a client of mine. He's in multiple litigations over his contracts because a contractor, someone that they were paying money to, or paying money to farm out, I'm not gonna get into the, the specifics for you because you don't care. But basically this person made a promise, or is supposed to have made a promise in their contract to not compete with them. They're not supposed to go to work for the person that they're placing. It's like placing a tent or something. They're not supposed to go work directly for one year after leaving my client's employ. Yet we look over the contract and the person who was supposed to sign it didn't. Okay, this was kind of a domino game. Someone placed the client with my client, who then placed it with the company that they're not supposed to work for. So that person who placed with my client signed it on that person's behalf instead of that person directly. And now that person had no idea they weren't supposed to compete and work for that company, work for the company directly. So this happened with multiple people. I'm in multiple litigations about it, but they never looked to see who signed it or even who was supposed to sign it and in that regard my client screwed up is it my client's fault probably not but they would have saved a lot of time and effort if they just read over their own contract and looked at the signature of who signed it that's example one example two is actually another attorney who isn't bothering to read so my client in this case ended up she owned, a, she owned a salon, and someone drove into her salon. And because of that, she wasn't able to pay rent to the owner of the building that her salon was in. So the owner, you know, basically had her evicted. We went through a whole trial and got a judgment against her. Now we're, of course, suing the person who ran into the salon for property damage. Um, you know, as soon as the attorney on the other side found out that we were starting a lawsuit, she hit me with a restraining notice that said, if I have any of my client's money, it can't go to her, obviously it has to go to pay the judgment against her, her company. So that happened 18 months ago. I sell the case 18 months later. Uh, we haven't received the money yet. We're still in the, in the midst of that. But... You know, the attorney finds out that there's a settlement. She then, you know, was trying to tell me I'm still restrained. I can't give out the money. That's not true. The restraining notice is last a year. So she hits me up with another restraining notice. I basically tell her where she can stick it because you need court permission to serve a second restraining notice. She's not happy, but she makes a motion to have the restraining notice served on me. Well, I'm gonna fight it just to prolong it, but once she, she'll get to serve the restraining notice on me, and when she does, you know, now, just to back up, she didn't read the rules about the restraining notice, or else she would know that you needed court permission. She would know it expired after a year. Two strikes. Third strike is she should know because it's in the rules and it's literally word for word in the restraining notice she served to me. 
it's I'm holding my hands like this because it's a block uh, it's a block of writing that's this long but it's in the restraining notice now she didn't read it obviously again because the restraining notice is only effective if I have the client's money at that time more than likely I'm not gonna have the client's money at that time so after going through a court motion, she's still not going to have an effective restraining notice. And she'll have to go to the court again. And by that time, my client's gonna have her money. So she would have saved herself a lot, a lot, a lot, and by she, I mean the attorney, of time and energy if she had just read the rules. Same goes for your business, read everything read the rules read the contract I know I sound like a broken record here but so many court cases would not exist if you'd taken the time to read the contracts to know what's in them to know what the limitations are so again my advice to all business owners and managers and to everyone take the time read the piece of paper in front of you all right so, if you like what I have to say here, you have any questions, hit me up, jesse at jdelaw.nyc. That's J-E-S-S-E at J-D-E-L-A-W dot N-Y-C. All right, until next time, take care.